Hello there. Welcome back to my ongoing attempt to review every single game ever on Steam Deck. Look, we've got some housekeeping to take care of. First of all, I'd like to apologize for my protracted absence over the last few months. There was an unfortunate set of personal circumstances that meant I couldn't commit the time I typically like to commit to creating these videos. But to be totally honest with you, those issues weren't the only reason I wasn't present in your feed. As much as I love making these episodes and putting every port of every game ever through its paces on Valve's inaugural handheld, I'll admit I was getting a little tired. I still love the process itself, don't get me wrong, but it was becoming predictable. Take any game I've tested across these videos, Spider-Man 2, uh, Time Splitter's Future Perfect, Burnout 2, you could nearly predict the outcome of my testing each and every time. The PS2 version of these games would look good and perform well, but suffer from off-putting levels of input lag. If there was an Xbox version to test, we'd run it through Zemu and it would perform, well, terribly. The real nail in the coffin though was Dolphin and its terrible frame pacing on deck. It's Dolphin's shoddy frame pacing that impairs the experience on the whole. As expected, Dolphin's frame pacing issues are still present in Spider-Man 2. Say it with me now folks, we've been through this enough times, Dolphin has shit frame pacing on the Steam Deck. Regardless, here's the GameCube version of the game running in Dolphin, the first emulator ever to edge me closer to a nervous breakdown. Look, I've been through this a bunch of times. Dolphin is an absolutely incredible emulator on just about every other operating system and device that it runs on. It's maintained by a gracious and talented group of volunteers that have given millions of gamers the opportunity to relive some of their favorite games and experience an abundance of titles that they may have missed out on. With that said, for me and many other users, it's been nigh on unusable on Steam Deck. Let me give you a, a short rundown of the problem. Up until now, any time you ran a GameCube or Wii game through Dolphin on Steam Deck, the same issue would present itself regardless of the game's performance. Every 10 to 15 seconds, or whenever data was being streamed into the emulator, your performance would randomly drop by 50%. The game would lethargically chug along for a few seconds with double the input lag and half the frame rate before deciding to return to normal. The deck's own frame rate graph wouldn't report the drop, nor did Dolphin's built-in performance display, so it was really difficult to show on video. In short, I was quickly running out of creative ways to dunk on Dolphin's crappy frame pacing on deck. Now, there were a whole host of interim fixes we used as deck owners to try and mitigate this issue. We were downclocking the deck's GPU so that more power could be sent over to the CPU. We were messing with the deck's refresh rate. Look, we tested it all and none of it really worked. The biggest improvement came from switching off the deck's multi-threading capability within power tools. This meant that instead of using the deck's four CPU cores and four additional threads, we were now just using those CPU cores on their own. It didn't solve the problem completely, but it was that fix in particular, switching off multi-threading, that ended up being more significant than we thought. As it turned out, by shutting down the deck's additional threads, we were partially circumventing a bug that had existed in Valve's drivers since day one. This bug primarily affected how CPU cores and threads were being put to sleep and reawakened when in use. All of a sudden, there was excited chatter amongst the enthusiast community that this bug was going to be squashed in the deck's next big update, SteamOS 3.5. This was months ago, and we've been eagerly awaiting a shadow drop ever since. This is the other main reason I haven't been with you. I felt like this update could come along right in the middle of my production cycle and result in a whole bunch of work that could potentially go to waste. I'm getting ahead of myself though, I'm far too excited. The point of this video is to say that SteamOS 3.5 is finally here. In typically unceremonious fashion, the update was stealthily pushed into the preview channel on the 15th of September 2023. The update comes with a whole host of features that run the gamut from front-end changes within Steam itself to desktop mode and kernel level improvements too. The main thing we're interested in though is that stupid bug. 
does this update mean that I can A, stop making rubbish jokes about Dolphin's compatibility on deck, and B, actually enjoy old games on my Steam Deck without having to play the BIOS shuffle? Well, hey, we're both here. I've got my newly updated Steam Deck. What say we revisit this series' worst performers so far and put SteamOS 3.5 to the test? I won't be fully reviewing these games as I did in each of their respective original videos. I'll just be looking at those ports worst affected by this god-awful bug. With that said, let's get cracking, shall we? Kicking off our retesting, we have the GameCube version of Time Splitters 2 being run through Dolphin in SteamOS 3.5 on deck. Back in my original video covering each and every Time Splitters game and port, I gave this particular iteration of the game a 6 out of 10 for compatibility. This game was the poster child for every problem we faced running Dolphin games on deck up until now. It had wonky frame pacing, unresponsive controls, the whole entire cheese board of issues could be experienced via this port. How does the game fare within Valve's shiny new OS? Well, it's with great pleasure that I can confirm it's been fixed. I can't quite believe it. I've, I felt as though at best SteamOS 3.5 would behave as though multi-threading was switched off in games that had this problem, in that it would be a bit better, but by no means a silver bullet. Let me tell you though, it's a silver bullet. I've put another 90 minutes or so into this game on deck, which is more than enough time to assess whether or not a true fix has been implemented here, and I haven't hit a single frame pacing related hitch along the way. Time Spitters 2 within Dolphin is now smooth as butter. What was once an immense disappointment on deck is now the marquee way to experience this game on the go. 6 out of 10? Forget that rating. The GameCube port of Time Splitters 2 gets a flawless 10 out of 10 for compatibility on deck. Praise the splitters. Switching gears to our next title, we're revisiting SSX3's GameCube port for another spin down Mega Mountain. In my original SSX video, I was really disappointed that this particular port couldn't excel over the PS2 and Xbox versions of the game on deck. Performance was overall quite good, with the exception of some hard drops to 30 frames per second. Working in conjunction with those drops was Dolphin's lousy frame pacing. I awarded the game with a 7 out of 10 for compatibility back in that original video. Jumping into the game via SteamOS 3.5, and we get a double whammy of fixes. On one hand, the often erratic frame rate has been completely ironed out, with no more hard drops to 30 felt during play or seen via GameScope's performance readout. Additionally, just like Time Spitters 2 before it, SSX3's frame pacing within Dolphin no longer desyncs during play. The game is playing just as well as it would on a Windows device of comparable power to the deck, which is high praise considering where we were at just a week ago. The game's pre-rendered cutscenes still glitch their way to completion whenever present, but this is an emulator level issue that affects all platforms. Taking everything into consideration, I can now comfortably give SSX3 within Dolphin a 9 out of 10 for compatibility on deck. In-game performance is just about flawless, and it's just those cutscenes causing issues as of now. Praise the powder! I should have saved switching gears for this transition, shouldn't I? Anyway, it's Burnout 2 on GameCube on deck. This game absolutely broke my heart when I originally tested it. The breakneck pace of Criterion's seminal arcade racer demands smooth performance and consistent response times, which earlier versions of SteamOS just couldn't provide. In a fit of upset passion, I slapped the port with a paltry 6 out of 10 for compatibility, citing poor frame pacing as the main contrivance. Well, here we are in the brave new world of SteamOS 3.5, and what do you know, the game's been fixed. It's an absolute joy to play as of now. I only encountered one singular frame rate hitch whilst playing the game, when an opponent careened into an oncoming haulier about 50 feet ahead of me. Other than that, the game is just about perfect. Controller response feels great, audio is good, and the game upscales really nicely to the deck screen. Burnout 2 gets a revised compatibility rating of 10 out of 10 on deck. Praise the, uh, the traffic. Mm -hmm. 
the last game we're going to take a look at for this video is a bit of a curveball. It's Ridge Racer 2 on the PSP within PPSSPP. Over the course of this series, I've had the opportunity to test quite a number of PSP games on deck across a multitude of franchises. On occasion, I've stumbled upon games that exhibit the same problems that Dolphin games typically suffered from on deck. Ridge Racer 2 was one of those games. The most pressing issue was poor frame pacing rearing its unloved head at specific points during each race. For that, and a minor set of visual glitches, I adorned the game with a 7 out of 10 for compatibility on deck. Revisiting it under the care of SteamOS 3.5, and once again our problems are solved. We still suffer from some minor visual regressions courtesy of PPSSPP as an emulator, but frames are now being delivered to your eyes and via a screen at a reliably smooth 60 frames per second. This one in particular means a great deal to me, as Ridge Racer 2 on the PSP is absolutely one of my favourite games. Getting to play it in an uncompromised form on deck feels great. Ridge Racer 2 gets a shiny new compatibility rating of 9 out of 10 on Steam Deck. Praise Rico! To say that I'm surprised at just how well SteamOS 3.5 has done throughout my testing would be an enormous understatement. As I mentioned earlier in the video, at most I expected a modest uptick in stability following the firmware's release. What we've gotten instead is effectively a brand new lease of life for emulation on the Steam Deck. I know that plenty of you have been happily playing Dolphin and PPSSPP games on your deck since launch, and you're probably listening to me going, huh, what's he talking about? I've been having loads of fun. And that's great, your experience is about to get even better. For me, I've always been a little disheartened by these emulators on deck, based purely off of the fact I knew that they could do better. And I've said that time and time again, well, here we are, it's been fixed, and I can now resume regular programming. Have you tried out SteamOS 3.5 yet? If you have, let me know how it's been going for you in the comments below. I'll also include a bunch of additional information in the description of this video that will hopefully be of use to you. You can expect to see regular episodes of the series again from me moving forward. In fact, the next episode will see us going somewhere very, very foggy. See ya!